smoothly. But we have to be tuned, we have to adapt to the new normal. And we are reminded to preserve the noble profession by addressing each other with respect and maintaining the temptation, restoration. And it depends on you, it depends on me. Now, your worship, on behalf of the local council, permit me to officially hand over to you all these persons who were found fit and proper to be entered on the prestigious role of advocates. I want to call upon my colleagues down there who have a lot of money and they are still illiterate to try and go back to school and acquire knowledge because money only is not enough. We need knowledge from school to be able to keep our heresy, our heresy and heresy beyond our lifetime. Most of my business colleagues are P5 dropouts. The highest they have gone is P7. So that's not enough knowledge that can help them uh, live legacy after their lifetime. So I call upon these rich people in Uganda and Kampala at large at least to acquire more knowledge. Go back and enroll, at least complete all level, A level, that will help you live a legacy by only your lifetime. Therefore, as a Ugandan, I have sacrificed myself, I went back to school, I have acquired the knowledge, and I want to use it to help fellow Ugandans. First and foremost, I am now a full advocate of the High Court of Uganda. I have been cleared to practice law in, courts of, in the High Court and Courts of Judicature. The first challenge I am seeing is that there are a lot of issues in Uganda. We have land grabbing, we have abuses in human rights, we have people who are abusing children, we have marriages, women down there who have been tortured, beaten. Therefore, my first role as an advocate is to uproar and protect the constitution of the Republic of Uganda. Uh, represent Ugandans in all legal aspects. Those who have lost their land, we shall help them. Those who are languishing in the prison is today, I'm going to represent them. The disadvantaged people like the women, the orphans, I'm going to provide legal services without discrimination. Even if they don't have money, like legal fees, we shall provide pro bono to them so that they get out of the problems they are facing today. And the tycoon dress well, I want to encourage you to dress well. All of you are smart, you are looking sharp, you are looking intelligent. Keep it at this. Do not get tired of appearing very decent. Many times in our practice, counsel walk in with clients and you cannot tell who is counsel and who is the client. Because the dressing is all terrible. The suit counsel is wearing has seen better days. You know, it has been washed and washed and washed. It is really in bad shape. The client is no better. It is until they introduce themselves that you say, hey, oh, okay, okay, okay. This is cancer. That is terrible. You know? How do you begin, begin to judge people when your outlook itself does not suggest your worth what you charge? I want to appeal to you. Dress decently. Remain smart. Appear sharp. Prepare for your cases. Prepare. Peruse. Peruse your files before you come to court. Come to court with the relevant authorities. And you know that now, under the new practice directions, when you appear, you must appear ready to proceed. The issue of my friend was a specialist at Adjani only. The new rules require that your instructions when you're holding brief, your instructions must include instructions to proceed with here. 
So that issue of just saying cancel in personal conduct is in this cause that you get away with it, now you must appear ready to proceed. So prepare, 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 prepare. That cannot be overemphasized. I also want to encourage us to embrace good values. Practice with honesty, practice with integrity. Let this be your brand. Let people know what it is that you stand for. I want to appeal to you to charge according to the scales. We have regulations. That locates remuneration and taxation, of course, regulations. Stick to the scale. Look at what the scale is saying and charge the client accordingly. If you charge above, I'm sorry, but uh, you may have to meet a uh, council piece at a certain point because the client will report you. If you charge below, there's also a very big problem. You can't charge below. Some people charge below in order to take business from others. I was at the country one time as a judicial officer and council were very put up because some of their colleagues were charging below the scale in order to attract clients. So the client would walk in and they would charge the client according to the scale. He tried another firm and it is charging below the scale. And that's where they would end up. That is also wrong. And that can land you in her in a, in a disciplinary committee. So I want to appeal to us this morning as we set out. Determine your calling. For those of you who have not yet decided, what is it that you want to do? What is it, which path do you want to take? You have enrolled today. What are you cut out for? I have friends who we finished law school with several years ago. And even when you meet them today, they are asking me about adverts for magistrates. And we say, but you've been in practice all these years. And they say, no, I think I'm not in the right place. I think I'm not in the right place. They have never really found that calling. And it is at this point that you determine what is it that you want to do. Is it private practice? Is that what you're cut out for? Litigation. Are you cut out to be a judicial officer? I'm excited that we have judicial officers. And I'm here to congratulate you on behalf of the law council. Congratulations. <laughs> I don't see the excitement, but for me I'm bubbling with joy. Because right away from primary one to this very day, there has been a constant seething taking place. If you look back, you will notice that not even everyone that registered to be here for this function is here. So you are allowed to smile under that mask and you know, punch yourself. Come on now. Yes, um, I take this opportunity to congratulate you for having been vetted as fit and proper persons to be entered on the prestigious role of advocates. As partners in your making, it is indeed delightful to witness a day such as this that marks a new dawn in the noble profession. Having taken oaths to adhere to the Code of Conduct for Advocates and your eventual subscription to the Gandalf Society, you have chosen significance and leadership. Just like that, you have chosen to be a leader in your community, in your society. If I can quote a renowned author, John Maxwell, in his book 360 Degrees Leadership, he mentions that leadership is a choice. It is not a place or position. By default, wherever you are, so long as they know that you're now an advocate, you will be singled out as a leader. Remember, leadership is not a position. It is not just you as an advocate. How you're going to carry yourself out there matters. Therefore, you will constantly be faced with a choice of right or good. Popularity or justice. What you choose will either make these achievements count or it will be brought to waste. The choice is absolutely yours as a new advocate today. I am one person who likes to read 
and I chanced on a very, very wise saying of one um, honorable person called Bishop Oedepo, and he said, you walk by common sense, you run by principles, and you fly by instruction. Today you are part of a profession that is different. The legal profession is highly regulated right from the school to this very point. You're still being regulated and you'll be regulated for the rest of your life because you chose to take this path. The sole purpose of regulation is to instruct and remind you of the boundaries within which you will fly as a professional. Have you noticed at the airport, you know who is escorted, for whom the doors are open, it is the pilots. When they come, they don't line up in the queues of immigration and all sorts of things. They walk with their nice uniforms and they are, the doors are open for them. All that, what is it for? Congratulations. Let's have a